Hey, what's up everyone? Owl here. Welcome back to Seven Wonders of St. Clementine Horror Thriller Visual Novel Chapter 2, Part 2. In the last episode, it's been revealed that many of the girls in the school have been vanishing, but no one can remember who they are, just that they're not there anymore. We've met a sexy PE teacher and a sexy science teacher, I think? Both of which seem to be up to, like, no good. The vice president seems to also know what's going on and is trying to solve it, and it has something to do with the Seven Wonders of St. Clementine, the titular items of the game. But no one will tell us what's going on, so maybe we'll get some answers this time. Let's continue. Alright, so the sexy gym teacher lured some boys into his classroom. Wish I was making a joke on that. <clears throat> and so those guys walked away with disappointed expressions on their face. Now, both of you... I need your help. Uh, what is it, Sensei? Well, it's actually Suzu who wanted your help. She needs two guys to do some heavy lifting. Uh, okay, I, I guess. No pressure. You can go and eat your lunch first, but make sure you go to the infirmary afterwards. Stay healthy, especially you, Yuto. Uh, yes, sir. His body was even taller than Yuto and his body was ripped, but not as muscular as a heavy lifter. But this guy was toned. I mean, you touch him, it was like warm marble. <sighs> Rugged face and sometimes a bit too loud, he reminded Say about his relatives who worked as military personnel. A bit awkward, stern looking, but once he talked, his voice was really loud. Even though I've been doing his voice kind of quiet. But you know what? Screw it. My narration, my rules. In the past six months in his PE class, Say had always been wondering if Ryu-sensei is actually a teacher, or someone who once involved in military. Perhaps. By the way, I, I think I said somewhere in the last episode of this game was actually uh, based from Japan. It's not! The company that makes this game is actually based out of Jakarta, Indonesia. This is an Indonesian game. And uh, you know what? I like it. Good. He slapped both Say and Yuto on the back. <laughs> yeah, right. Ugh. Now, I'll be going. Where are you going, Sensei? Buying melon bread. Why? Uh, it's nothing. No, no reason. Ugh, I guess we need to finish our lunch quickly, then. Why the long face, man? Been itching to tell you about the Seven Wonders. That I can't focus on anything. Yes, please tell me. We are halfway through Chapter 2, and I don't know what the title means. And are these things related to why everyone is vanishing, and why we found half a deer in the woods? Who eats half a deer? That's just wasteful. Please use your energy in something productive. Say, don't you, don't you info block me on this one, boy. By the way, hurry up or we'll lose our time to eat. I'll be right back. Well, here we are, in front of the infirmary, alone. Why are we standing here again? I mean, why are we hesitating again? Let's just say, it'll be a hassle. Say not to that. Prostate exams often were. Second, this lady. I can't help but feel she's dangerous. Eh. Uh, yeah. Is it worth it, though? I really want to say no. But it may be. <laughs> huh? Anyway, the sound is coming from inside. Let's go in. <laughs> this is funny. She was laughing at a teenage girl magazine. Oh, she's probably laughing at Cosmo. Yeah, in hindsight, that magazine is pretty funny. As a teenager, though, it's like, that's how you have sex? It's, it's not. People who get your sex advice from Cosmo, d don't. Just don't. Just, just don't. Just, just please don't. I beg of you. Sensei? Yeah, Ryu-chan sent you guys, right? Yep. Why are you guys just standing in front of this room, then? Uh... Or do you need an older lady's seduction first? Nope, nope, we're good. Nope, we're, we're very good. Um, gosh, it's, just, it's that voice, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, dude! No! No. Uh, I mean, no, no, no. Uh, we're here because we heard you, you need our help, ma'am. Suzu Sensei smiled. All right, then. Let's start the work immediately. Yes, that's right. Move it a bit to the left. Yeah, that's it. Place it right there. Now everything looks perfect. Why is everyone sexualizing me? 
I don't like this. Suzu Sensei was smiling while puffed her chest out. This is a high school lady! The boys were exhausted. Although they certainly got a view they could dream worthy of the work they were doing, one thought remained in their minds and hearts. This feels mad sketchy and slightly illegal. A feeling of dissatisfaction and uselessness. Moreover, the energy that was spent didn't amount to much. The sexy looking sensei had wanted their help to redecorate the room for some reason. The boys handled the heavy stuff. The infirmary bed was surprisingly not heavy, but there was one thing that is much heavier than it looks. The guilty conscience we all carry inside of us. A cabinet made from iron plate. The contents were mainly documents. So, a filing cabinet. They had to lift it together, or the cabinet wouldn't budge at all. Nice work, you two. She said nonchalantly, with a teenage girl magazine in her hand. Magazine. In her hand. The boys were looking at each other, and then let a big sigh. Uh, Sensei, isn't this just the same as how it used to be? Sei finally pointed that out after quite a while had already passed. Really? <laughs> but you guys did such a good job. What's inside this thing, actually? Hmm? Oh, nothing important. Just some documents about this school. That sounds really important, though. But why is it here? There was some kind of renovation going on in this school. <laughs> like, finally. She threw herself into the chair as if to say the whole ordeal had sucked up her energy dry. Because there's no room to store all the documents, some of them are scattered in the building. Yuto and Sei looked at each other. In the past month, sometime after Yuto and Sensei entered the school, there was a plan to renovate the school. Although it is called renovation, it was more a repurposing and redesigning room. Is that fine? I mean, these school-related documents must be like important stuff. Yes, it's just about the owner of the school and other miscellaneous crap. The owner? That sounds really important. Don't we need that for, like, tax purposes? Uh, are, are we done here, Sensei? Huh? You want to go? Don't you want to do something with me? She said it while tapping on a chair. Do something with you? Wait, why does he have lips now? Oh, his mouth's open. <laughs> I thought he randomly had full, luscious lips. His mouth's just open. Okay. Do something with you? He said it with a loud voice. Yuto immediately sat down there because apparently he is a simp. And a pleb. What, what do you mean? Wait, this isn't an adult game, is it? Of course, it's a love consultation. Uh... He definitely was disappointed. I don't know, man. This would still go any way. Why do you look so disappointed? Uh, nothing. I was just kind of hoping to get some. I'm, look, I'm a horny teenage boy. What do you want from me? Come on, you guys must be having crushes right now, right? Only on myself, Yuto said, staring into a mirror. Other than treating the health of this school student, I also solve love problems. She said cheerfully, like a young teenager. Is that why you read teen magazines? Once again, you should not get love advice from Cosmo. Nope, these books are just for laugh. Alright, good. Huh. Are there any comedy manga in that magazine? No, but this magazine shows how fragile the emotion of teen girls are right now. They don't convey their feelings because they are so afraid and shy. Back then, two girls would convey their feelings to one they loved because they knew that they may never meet each other again in the future. The conversation suddenly turned heavy. Back then? How old is back then anyway? That really sounds like wartime. The girl will never meet the boy she loves because of war? What was the last war Japan was involved in? I know technically they haven't really had a military, strictly speaking, since World War II, and they were nominally involved in NAM. I know there were some terrorist attacks in the 80s that were really messed up, and also a bunch of student protests in the 70s. Also, there's always the threat of Korea, because face it, if North Korea goes crazy, Japan is right there, and they are a strong ally of the West. Let's just say in case Rocket Man decides to get a little heavy pressing of the red button. That's why! What is this guy saying all of a sudden? I tried to convey my feelings, but she didn't respond to me at all! Now we're talking. Alright, I'd better sneak out of this place while I still have a chance. Ah, this. This is my paradise. Rows and rows of books of erotic literature. A place of tranquility and knowledge. 
All of his muscles instantly relaxed just by sniffing a book smell. The fact that the book had cocainum inside of it was just purely irrelevant. His eyes were pleased by the sight of books in every corner. There were two things that Say loved exponentially. Corned beef? Really? And a shelf full of books. This guy likes a good Reuben, eh? It's a nice sandwich. I approve. Corned beef, sauerkraut, Swiss cheese, rye bread, Thousand Island dressing. Mmm. So good. And you can have it with pastrami if you prefer. It's still good either way. That's why for him, nothing beats the taste of corned beef and being in a library. Okay, kind of a weird combination, but uh, I'm just gonna I'll, I'll roll with it. You know, maybe may, he's hey he's Indonesian. Maybe it's different over there. You know, I had a friend who went to high school in Jakarta, but he went to an international private school. So how much he got of the real Jakarta experience is uh, up to debate. He walked in between the shelf, heading to a section that he hadn't discovered yet. This is the restricted section. Only seventh years are allowed here. A section for books that the librarian found hard to include in every other section. And if I knew the names of any of the books from the Forbidden section, like the one where they got the Polyjuice Potion recipe, I would include it here. But I don't know what it's called. You can say it's a random section, or pending section. Once they figure out where to place this, it'll be gone from here. Now, what book should I read today? He picked one of the books, and immediately he saw a face on the other side of the bookshelf. A round pair of eyes as clear as the sky. A cute nose and small lips. It was his teacher. They were alone in the library at last. Ah! Uh, uh. Hi. All of Say's thoughts just went poof like a steam. The only girl who can make him like that was the one and only Miyazaki Nana. She was the girl who had screamed back in the forest, okay? Not the teacher. Got it. Oh, it was the girl who discovered the deer. Yeah, I'd, I'd scream too if I found... I don't know if I'd scream, but I definitely would be very uncomfortable. What are you going to read now? No. <laughs> I'm not going to make that Nana's voice. What are you going to read now? Uh, I don't know. Maybe this book, a biography about a short-lived genius musician. That one is interesting. She moved away from the other side and slowly approaching Say. She tried to reach a book on the top shelf, but she couldn't reach it because she's a lowly. She couldn't reach it. Maybe we should pick her body up so she can reach the book. That would be an alpha move, but you should always ask before you do that. Or, I could have become her footstep. Oh, say, got a little domination kink going on there. I like. What the hell, Mizukami say? What are you thinking? Uh, which one? That one with the red cover. This one? Oh, uh, there you go. No, that's for you. Huh? That book is actually in pair with this book. Rooftop Siren, huh? Interesting. I recommend you read both of them. In whichever order you want to read first, that doesn't matter. Alright, uh, thanks for the recommendation. Alright, sweet. You sure love books, do you? Pretty much. What makes you a full-time literature nerd, then? You bacow good at something. But well, that's the only thing you can do. <laughs> By the way, Say. She paused for a short bit, her eyes jumping across the room before fixating on Say. Do you know about the Seven Wonders of St. Clementine? No! But I would love. Sorry, sorry, it's a touchy subject for me. Um. <clears throat> no, please, please continue. Wow, that's actually my third time hearing it today. Did I just hit the jackpot? <laughs> You're funny. She laughed. So, what have you heard about it so far? Not much, but my friend mentioned something about a series of missing students. And those missing students are mostly girls, right? So you've heard about it? Actually, I knew something about it. Do you want to know? Yes! Her face was smiling, and he couldn't resist that smile. That boyish prepubescent smile. Say had a lot of issues. And I believe they said somewhere that Say is a junior, and I think this chick's a freshman, so I don't know. But either way, like, there's clearly some disparaging going on here. Say actually wasn't interested in anything about the Seven Wonders. Say, why do you make it? Why do you make it hard to like you? This is, this is why your only friend is a massive stoner. 
because no one else can stand you, my friend. However, it could damage their relationship if he declined, and also he wanted to get closer to Nana. Aww. Okay, go ahead. Uh, 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 carry on. Nana's smile got wider and brighter. Her smile got wider and brighter. More reason not to leave the library, for say. I heard it from a girl. Something about a headless person? Headless? Like a Dullahan? Exactly! The headless person is seen in the forest, and it can only be seen at night. The figure is clearly a girl. Moreover, the clothes from that headless person wearing is a schoolgirl uniform. Nobody knows if the girl is actually those girls who went missing, because those who had seen Vadulodan immediately run after seeing the figure. Well, if I saw a floating headless figure, I'd probably GTFO too. Vadulodan. I see. Your face is telling me that you don't believe what I say. The girl pouted, as she clearly was annoyed by Say's reaction. No, 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 I, I don't mean that. I, I mean to hear this from you passionately, despite that six months ago you were so scared by the lifeless deer back then. A person can change, you know. Besides, it's just a rumor after all. <laughs> Girls sure do love fiction, eh? Don't stereotype. But yes, at least I love fiction. <laughs> You know, I'm also curious about the other wonders. What a lovely smile, Say thought. He wanted to tell her everything about it. But the fact remained, he didn't know anything about it. Not even an interest. Until now. The librarian is going to be closed! The li- fucking shit! The library is going to be closed! The librarian was yelling from the receptionist table. Uh, okay, okay. Well, I guess see you tomorrow? Yeah, see you tomorrow. Whew, oh my. As always, every time I head back from the library, the sky turns dark. And when the sun sets, the school complex suddenly turns real dark and dead silent. Huh. Here I am talking to myself. The wind was freezing, instantly giving Say a chill up on his spine. The wind today is especially cold. And then, for some reason, the corner of his eyes caught the sight of the forest. I wonder if that place is also one of the Seven Wonders. Huh. Welcome back! Oh yeah, I'm back. Say was looking at Yuto, who was sitting down at his desk. He seemed busy with something. A book. Yuto was holding a book, Say realized. I see. What? You're a man of culture as well. Ha ha. Meme time. Huh? Is it that rare to see me reading? Almost envious, man. As far as I know, you never study. But you still manage to be the second best in the midterm. Second to you, it is. The hell you trying to flex or something? <laughs> I'd call it a classy reminder. <laughs> Screw you, man. So, uh, what are you doing? Say put down his bag and let himself drown in the pillow. Nothing, just a little research. After all that, you still have energy, eh? A little bit. Especially for something I'm curious about. Say was ready to sleep. He was so exhausted, he didn't mind his clothes. You two had always been sort of a parent figure in that room. He'll remind Say to change his clothes first and wash his face. But today, Yuto is so focused on his research. When Say was about to sleep, something comes to his mind. Dude... Can, can I ask you something? Fire away! What can you tell me about the Seven Wonders of St. Clementine? Oh boy, I can tell you everything you need to know. Well, anything. Everyone seems to talk about it. Well, just you and two other people, but like, you know, still. Why are you suddenly interested in it? I can't say, so... It's so I'll have something to talk about with Nana, but I, I can't say that. Uh... I can smell... <laughs> A girl? Hey, maybe I just like to smell pretty, okay? What, what are you, a dog? Come to think of it, you talked to my angel, right? What did you talk about? Calm down, dude. We were just having a meeting. <sighs> I hope I can get close to her. Break a leg, lover boy. Now tell me about the seven wonders. Alright, alright. Can you tell me something, dude? Yep. What are we doing here? Oh, we're now in the corridor. I thought this was just, like, to make the story creepier. Okay, okay, so we've, we've broken out of our dorms over in the hallway. What are we doing here? What do you mean? You're the one who wants to know about the Seven Wonders, right? 
I didn't say that I'd actually want to investigate it myself. Too late, bro. Say was so sleepy, but he just followed Yudo. His body just reacted to it. And now they are already at one of the Seven Wonders. Well, we're here. Oh my god. Here we are, man. The first? I don't know. Nobody mentions which one is which number. Let's just call it the first one, then. Yeah. The first one is the screaming staircase. It is said that you could hear a girl screaming here. There's no telling when, but a few students have heard the screams. Uh-huh. All right. Let's go to the next one. Oi, oi, oi. Hold your horses, man. We haven't even done anything yet. But I don't hear any screams or any girl wheezing, for that matter. Hear me out first, will you? You two pointed his light at the stair. It is said you have to take the stairs until you reach the top. It is exactly 13 steps. 13 steps? That's strange. What's so strange about it? Well, this building's floor height is around 4 meters. So? It means the steps should be around 11 or 12 steps. Dude, really? What? It, it just doesn't make any sense. Look, I studied architecture in middle school. I know these things, okay, man? Yuto sighed and turned to Sai. We need to talk about your imagination right now. He said that while tapping on Sai's shoulder. What do I need to know about my imagination? You see, some people do talk about the step number. 11 steps from the floor to the mezzanine, and 12 steps to the next floor. Now, the 13th steps are of a wonder. It is said that a girl screamed to her death from that 13th steps. So, what we have to do right here, now, is climb the stairs to the top. If you can count it to 12, you're safe. If you can't, then you'll hear a scream of a girl. Nonsense. Dude, I mean, even all of this is just a fantasy, people let their imagination run wild for a short sensation of a thrill. It's like a haunted house. Dude, I'd call bullshit... Say immediately swallowed his last words after his witnessing something. A black, almost silhouette figure was appearing at the top of the stairs. What's more, it came with an eerie, disheartening scream. How many times his brain tried to convince him that everything was not real. But no, it was happening. Dude, that's... Huh? What's wrong, dude? And immediately after Yuto turned his back, the figure was completely gone. Along with the scream. Dude, what's the matter with you? You okay? No, it's... It's nothing. Oh, I know. You just want to scare me, no? Amateur. <laughs> By the way, did you hear something? That's a scream! Oh, well, I think we're done here. Let's go, man. Huh? Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's, uh, let's go. Let's get the fuck out of here, man. Do you still got any of that good stuff back in our room? I need a smoke. There was something about that previous experience that made Say quiet. He didn't utter a single word after that. His mind was simply questioning everything he believed. It's not all about seeing what is supposed to be a ghost that changed Say's mind. He remembered everything exactly from the start he stepped foot on the station. He realized that everything felt... strange. You okay, dude? It's nothing. But, but come on. Are we there yet? Say tried his best to deny what he had seen. He couldn't get it out of his head. Just a few more steps. By the way, why don't we use our flashlights? Nah, you can't. Because from the outside, the school is completely dark. And the light is much more noticeable. Besides the moonlight here, which is unnaturally bright. So why were we using them before? It's less noticeable in that place. But here, the school guard might notice us and, uh... Yeah, we might get in trouble. Entering the school without a permit at this time of night is already quite a cause for trouble. Come on, I just managed to sneak the master key, alright? It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yuto suddenly stopped himself. What are you doing? Shh! He was telling Say to shut up. In an instant, the sound of footsteps faded. Although everything was dark, Say could see that Yuto was focusing on his hearing. Strange. What is... I thought we were being followed. We could be being followed by Reiko-chan. As far as I know, she's investigating this too. But she seemed reluctant to share her findings when we asked her about it earlier. Now you're into the supernatural? I was sure though, but... Oh well. Anyone, we're here. The second of wonders. The song of sorrow. 
The moment they stepped into the room, everything was unnaturally clear. The moonlight made most of the things in the room visible. Without any dust, I think it'd be a great room. Instead of the room is abandoned because there was a lot of accidents back when this room was still being used. Specific incidents? Mostly involved the students, male and female alike. Never the teacher. But incidents involved all of the items in this room, like getting hit by wind instruments falling from the shelf, but the most prominent was a hand broken by the lid of the grand piano. Such things common? Might be. But they become strange if the frequency is so strong. So the wonder is the incident? Some say it's a poltergeist over there. That grand piano? The incidents that often happen in this room is just the effect of a sad song. Most of the victims were crying when the incident struck them. All of them said the same thing, but they heard a very sad song. While the others with them didn't hear anything? Exactly. Yuto circled the grand piano. Now that we're here, what should we do? That's what I want to ask you. There must be some sort of prerequisite, just like the previous one, right? This one, no, I'm not sure. In fact, there is no such thing. So what do we do? <sighs> you two let out a huge sigh. What's wrong, man? Nothing, I just think that we just have to do something here. I, I can't explain it. Anything will do. I see. So we're going to try to remake those incidents, no? When you put like that, it sounds scary. But that's what we're going to do, man. But there wasn't any shreds of fear left in Say. He managed to convince his brains that everything he had seen so far was just an illusion. Using his light, he opened a cabinet full of files. Those files were mostly music scores, some documents regarding music lessons and music club. One of the documents strangely piqued Say's interest. The cover was somehow different. A hard cover of the symbol of St. Clementine, with a title, Graduation Booklet. The year of the book was unclear because it was smudged. He opened the book and scanned through it. There was nothing special until he opened another page. An empty frame with a title, Honor Students of St. Clementine, Year 19. No photograph, no name, and again, the year wasn't clear either. What the hell? Did they screw up with the printing? The empty frame was followed by a list of the honored student's achievements. It was a long list of various feats the students had done. One of the achievements was winning a beauty pageant in the town. It was safe to assume that the honored student was a girl. Was she a superhuman or something? She practically could do everything. Sport, fine art, and science? There were minimal two achievements in each subject. Wow. She was hot. And then there was one achievement that made his eyes wide open. First place in green energy design competition. A stream of memories immediately flowed into Say's brain. This... Wasn't this his mom's achievements? She often told me about this. About how she... How she wants to... Mom, her picture isn't, isn't there. But she was there with me before her disappearance. No picture. No name. Missing person. Say's mom is one of the missing people. And that sounds like a really good place to leave off. So, apparently not only students can disappear, or maybe they disappear and reappear, because Say's mom had to have graduated to give birth to him, but if she's now missing, how could that be, unless she's a teacher, and even teachers aren't safe? We'll have to find out in a later episode. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked what you've seen so far. If you have, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you don't like what you see, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe anyway. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for sticking with me. And I'll see you in the next video. Mwah.